Hello gentle people and welcome to another Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. If this is your first time joining me, again, welcome, and if you are returning, I'm glad you're back. Uh, over the weekend, I did a show, and someone saw this particular charcuterie board with this absolutely gorgeous, I, you've got the reflection in the resin, but this gorgeous peacock on this board, and they asked me if I hand-painted that, and I explained that no, it was not hand-painted, that I used a tattoo and then I went in and I uh, added highlights to it. So in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how I actually applied that tattoo to the board. So let's get right to it with our materials. So the first thing we need is the charcuterie board. In this case this is a small a square paddle that I'm going to be using and when I get started the first thing I always do is tape the back of my board with the uh, painters tape and then I am going to be applying a tattoo of a peacock I got this package of tattoos and it has several different peacock illustrations as well as some other I don't know what do you call these as well as these these birds dragonish looking but this is the one oops excuse me this is the one that I'm going to be using And when you apply it, it will be in reverse. So instead of him facing this direction, he'll be facing that direction. So let me just set that there. I always put a coat of gesso on my board to make sure that none of the wood shows through. And of course, we need a paintbrush for the gesso. And then once the gesso is dried, I am going to do go over that gesso with acrylic paint. And I'm using the color palette of the background here. So this is kind of a blue-green. This is a lavender. This is more of a blue. So I'm trying to pick those colors up. So I'll be doing the background in the Master's Touch Sky Blue Liquid Basics Brilliant Purple that looks more like lavender to me but they call it Brilliant Purple and then we're also going to be adding <clears throat> adding a little adding some highlights using the Deco Art Extreme Sheen Sapphire and the Deco Art Extreme Sheen 24 Karat Gold. I just I just love these. And to apply that, need a little fine paintbrush. And rather than paint or do an acrylic pour with the paint, I am going to do. Uh, the balloon technique that I love so much. In order to apply the tattoo, I'll need a sponge and just a cup of water. Once the acrylic paint is dry, I'm going to go in and add some highlights with this fine glitter and this DecoArt clear gloss varnish. Once everything is dry, we'll then seal the board in resin. And of course, my go-to resin is always the Craft Smart. That's the part A. And that's the part B. And of course, if you're working with resin, you need some nitrile gloves. We need a measuring cup. We need a stir stick. Okay, I'm going to clear all of this away 
and then we will get started. Alrighty, I'm back. In order to determine where the tape goes, we have to first decide where we're going to position the tattoo. This tattoo is actually going to be reversed. So you're looking at it, when we put it down, the bird will be looking that direction off the board. And so to basically know where to apply the gesso, I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to cut this tattoo out so we know where where we need to be applying. And these tattoos come with a clear cover. Oops, can I do that? Yeah. You can see they come with a clear cover. You want to make sure that cover stays attached until you're ready to apply the tattoo. Okay, so this tattoo is going to go on just like so which means I'm going to be taping halfway up both sides and across the bottom. So let's do that now. And again, we take the back of the board to make sure no paint gets on the back and to make sure that when we do the final resin coating, that none of that resin gets on the back. And so I always just run my fingers along the edge here and then take a new razor blade and let's just trim this. And just run your fingers along the edge and make sure that your tape is tight. You don't want anything leaking underneath it. And again, our tattoo is going like so. And so I'm going to just take a pencil and outline, draw a rough little line this is where I need my acrylic paint to be. So the first thing we're going to do is paint the board with the gesso. And this is not real, this is not a sealer per se, this is more of a primer. Um, I started using gesso when I was working on canvases because it, it tightens, it, it, it fills in the weave of the canvas and then your, your paint doesn't soak through. It's, it sits nicely on the surface. The other thing with the gesso is if you're using the gesso, then you make sure that your colors, the wood does not show through. And I'm just following that line that I put on here.
So we're just going to put the cover on this. We're going to let that set for about an hour and then we're going to come back in and I'm going to paint that background with my balloon. I'm back. The gesso has dried nicely. And so now we're going to blow up our balloon. And then we are going to paint this board so we have a background for our tattoo to go on. Uh, one change I did make, well two changes actually. I started out saying I was going to be using the sky blue, but decided I wanted a greater contrast. So I'm going to be using the ultra I'm going to be using the ultramarine blue instead. I think the darker blue just gives more contrast. So this is what I'm going to be using. So I have my balloon that I need to blow up. And it doesn't have to be blown up a whole lot. Just, just, just a little bit. Ooh. And the other change I made is I'm going to be adding the Extreme Sheen Silver to the background as well. So I have my Brilliant Purple, my Ultramarine, and my Silver. And so what we're going to do is just... <clears throat> Silver there, drop a silver there, drop a silver there, Get a drop of blue in there, and then just take our balloon. It doesn't matter the order in which you put your colors. Um, you just decide where you want it to be lighter, where you want it to be darker, um, whether you want some shimmer, you just decide. And I never wipe my balloon off, I just keep reusing it. Okay, see that's pretty. That's pretty. That looks nice. Kind of roll that around a little bit and then you get a little pattern if you roll it. And you can see I mixed my paints in these smaller cups because it's just easier for me to manage.
these almost look like sand dollars the way these are shaped with the balloon And this acrylic paint has actually been mixed with a little bit of Floetrol. Uh, I'll take the bottle out and show you in a second. Flood Floetrol. That's what I mix into my acrylic paint to thin it out a little bit. And so now I'm just going and filling in some of the spots where I have the white background showing through. Okay, so now I need to do the edges, so we need some cups. And when I do my edges, I actually put the paint directly on the balloon. Just dab some of that, dab some of that, dab some of that, and then And I think that's good enough. Uh, I think we need a little more dark up here.
I think I'm I think I'm satisfied. All right, so that's that. So we'll let that dry. And once that dries, then we will apply our peacock tattoo. Okay, this seems to be dry. And so what we're going to do now is place the tattoo on here. And so I have filled my little yogurt cup with water. I have my sponge, which I'm gonna drop in the water. Squeeze out the excess. We're going to now remove the clear, the clear cover. We're going to take our tattoo and we're going to place it on our board. And then we're simply going to take this damp sponge and just press. with the sponge a little bit more. And these are temporary tattoos. They're not permanent. They're tattoos for your body. And you would apply them to your body the same way. You'd wet your skin, put the tattoo face down on your skin, and then take a sponge or a damp cloth and just continue to press down. Okay, and then we peel this white paper up and it should leave our tattoo on our board. And I always peel this up slowly just in case it's not attached properly. Then I can wet it some more. So we're going to I went with the dark blue and now that I'm looking at it I probably should have stuck with the sky blue but there you have her there's our peacock and so now I'm going to let this dry for about an hour and then I'll come back in and I'll start adding highlights to make her really pop against the background But yeah, the background actually, because it's so dark, um, yeah, she's, she's pretty, she's pretty. But the background could have been lighter because the background is almost too busy in this case. But we're gonna just let it sit here and dry 
and then we'll come back in about an hour or so and we will get her um, add highlights to her. Okay, this is where the fun begins. So let's see, what do we want to do first? Let's do the gold. Let's do the gold. And I have the <clears throat> I have the Deco Art Extreme Sheen 24 karat gold and I'm going to use that to highlight the feathers. So let's give this a good shake. And again, I um, my background is darker than I really intended it to be, but that's okay. We're gonna go through, and we're gonna add some highlights here. So basically what I'm doing is taking this gold and I'm just adding it wherever I see gold or orange. And already you can see that that's brighter. I could actually have a finer brush, but I, my other fine brushes are all goofed up. And so I generally don't talk much when I'm painting little fine details like this. So I'm not radio silent, I'm just concentrating. I tried this once before using um, the relief. Uh, where is it? Let me see. 
yeah, I tried this before using the um, Pabio pay, uh, Relief Outliner, but it was just it was so thick I couldn't get it as fine as I needed it, so I decided to just use the um, gold paint. So we're just putting some little gold streaks in different spots just to brighten this up a little bit. Since I made the mistake of making the background so dark. It's not really dark, um, but I'm going to have to do a little bit more of this to brighten it up some. I think these flowers could use a little something. Let me see what I have. I think I'm going to use this Deco Art Extreme Sheen Pink, what is this called? Tourmaline. I'm gonna open this and I think I'm gonna just dab some of this. Oops. Okay, let me get this open. And all we're trying to do right now is just brighten this a little bit since it's so dark. You just want to brighten it a little bit, add some highlights to brighten it. Okay, that was just a little bit, not much. And now, um, Lavender Frost. Obviously none of these were in my materials, but that's because I didn't realize this was going to be so dark. And so now my goal is to just brighten and lighten this some. And I'm not even going to this I'm just going to put this right on the brush Actually, you know what, let me put it in the container. Because it would be my luck to just have it squish all out all over everything.
it's my Yeah, this is too close to this, so we're not going to we're not going to use this. That didn't work out the way I thought. Okay, so I'm going to leave this like it is for now. Let this paint dry, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to put the oh, my packaging I'm going to come back and I'm going to put blue, this fine blue glitter on here. And that'll make it pop a little more. So we're just going to set that there. And um, that's it for now. Now there are two ways to add glitter. You can either put glue Put your glue or adhesive on the area where you want the glitter, pour the glitter on there, and then shake off the excess. That's what I did with this one. My only problem with that is when you do it that way, if you put the glue on here, sprinkle the glitter on, then shake it off, you always have glitter left on here. And then you have to take a brush Plus the fact you wind up with glitter all over everything. Every other project that you do will have glitter on it. So this again is waiting to be uh, sealed in resin. So rather than just put the glue on and then sprinkle the glitter and then wipe off the excess, I always add my, gl my glitter to varnish. And then I paint it on. So we are going to... We are going to put the cup there. It's the Deco Art Gloss Varnish. We're going to add just a couple of drops. That's all we need. And then we're going to add our glitter to the varnish. Mix that. And then paint this on. It's much neater. And then I don't have glitter all over everything. And again, when I'm not talking, it's because I'm concentrating. It's funny when you're pricing your work, people will sometimes say your prices are too high, but if they really knew how much time it took you to actually do all of these little fine details, they would understand the pricing.
So I think we're going to leave that like that. And the only other thing I think I need to do is something to make her head stand out. We need, uh, let me see if I have some purple or silver. Let me find some silver glitter or something. All right, one drop of the gloss varnish and This is a nice set because this is a, a, a Easter. This is an Easter collection. All the past, oi, oi, boy, that's not good. All the um, Easter pastels. Hold up. Let me get rid of this. And actually, that's like stuck right there. I don't want that. But anyway, we won't worry about it. So, I am trying to mix this. what I'm going for. Let's see. I'm trying to make her head stand out. Oops. I don't think I did what I was trying to do. Yeah, the background here is just, that's too dark. Maybe I can paint. Maybe I can lighten that. Let me see. What do we have? This is, uh, this is sterling silver. Let's see if I can brush on some sterling silver and lighten that. I need a different paintbrush. take some of this sterling silver and just lighten around the head. Uh, not doing much, huh?
Yep, I do not like that I made the background so dark, but that's okay. We are, we are done. Let me turn her around and let you see her. So once we put the resin on, she'll be brighter. Yep, so we're gonna let this dry about an hour or so, and then we'll come back and we'll apply resin to seal this up. And we are, we'll be done. Okay. I'm back and I believe these are dry enough now or this one this was I did this one yesterday um, but this looks to be dry enough nothing shaking off of it and so we're going to mix our resin and we're going to seal this and I am going to do these are small so I'm going to do 80 I think 80 milliliters ought to be, 80 milliliters should cover it. If not, I can always mix some more. So we have our part B hardener. And we'll do 40 milliliters of that. And we'll add 40 milliliters of part A resin. Always mix your resin according to the manufacturer's instructions. Craft Smart Resin says mix for five minutes. So we're going to turn our timer on for five minutes. I am going to begin stirring and put this on fast forward. Okay, our resin is mixed, and so now we're just going to do a clear coat. And I always say don't push your resin all the way to the edge because when you use the heat gun to pop the air bubbles, it warms the resin and it spreads and then it'll go beyond your border. And on a board like this with the hole in it, you need to make sure that you are um, getting resin down inside that hole. It has been painted, uh, so you have to make sure resin goes into the hole and around that as well. Because again, once you put the heat gun to this, this resin is going to begin to spread. Yeah, that looks so nice now. run your palette knife underneath that and catch those drips and put them right back up on top
Okay, so now I'm going to start moving this out to the edges because it doesn't seem to be moving. to cure overnight. Okay, it is the next day, the next morning. So let's remove this cover and let's see how these actually turned out. The anticipation is just, I don't know, the anticipation Ooh, the anticipation. So here we go. Let's see what we're working with. Oh! Oh my goodness! That is so beautiful. Take a look. Hope that's in the camera range. Ooh, let me move the cups. Look at that. Oh, that is so pretty. That is absolutely gorgeous. Wow, and I was worried about the background being so dark, but adding that glitter and that gold, that's wonderful. And the green one, let's see. And there's the green one. A lot of bling in that one really really nice so now all we have to do is remove the tape from the back and um, oil our boards and we will be done so let's flip this over we're going to soften this with the heat gun and then this tape should peel right up Love it when it peels right up. Perfecto! And then I always make sure that I leave just a little teeny lip on this to go over the edge. And so we're going to take our razor blade and we're going to get rid of that. Get rid of that little lip. Okay, and then just to make sure that this is a smooth edge, I'm going to just run my sander along this so that it's nice and finished. Got a little resin right there. Let's sand that off. Very nice. And then we will oil this, but let's uh, get the tape off of this one first. All right, so now with this edge, because there was no tape here, we have to add a little extra heat to that and then scrape that off. And these bumps, uh, earlier I said take your, when, you were, when we were pouring the resin, to take the palette knife and scoop underneath, and that's to get rid of these drips. Ah, very good, nice and clean. Okay, so this is just going to be sanded. I use the sanding sponges on the coasters and on resin, but when I'm doing wood, I like to use the electric sander. 
how you finish your work is important. And that hole, you can see the resin goes right in. That's beautiful. Okay, for this one, again, just nice, clean, nice, clean finish to the work. If you've watched any of my other videos, um, again, when I deliver the boards, I always include care instructions and advise um, my customers to make sure that when they receive their boards, um, that periodically they oil them. Um, and you can use a variety of uh, oils. I use 13 Chefs Food Grade Mineral Oil. And it says for cutting boards, butcher blocks, wood furniture, steel surfaces, and more, maintain, protect, and restore. And again, you'll notice it is food safe. So you need to oil your boards um, every couple of months or so. And that will keep them uh, conditioned. And while a lot of people put their oil on with a cloth, I like to use my fingers because I always feel like the cloth absorbs a lot of the oil. So we want to put this oil on here and let it set for about 30 minutes and then come back and just wipe off the excess. This makes the wood look so nice. <clears throat> and again, don't forget the hole. And it's really nice when your resin rolls over the edge because it gives your work a nice finished look. That's really pretty. All right. We are done. And I am so satisfied. Okay, so I didn't have the money to pay for an electric brand, so I got a really cheap one that I have to put on the stove to heat up. 